let's see a little bit about aldoses uh, there is a very big family of aldoses and uh, let's get to each of them step by step so the simplest polyhydroxy aldehyde i think you can imagine what it could be so if there is an aldehyde group and by poly i means at least two then you would understand that it should have a, a CHO group here and then at least two then you can have two carbons and two OH groups right and then you can have other hydrogens so this is the simplest uh, polyhydroxy aldehyde but uh, this is only the structure if there is only chi any chiral carbon we need to be a little bit more sensitive and understand that it could lead to more than one molecules so the name the common name it has got a common name glyceraldehyde why this common name glyceraldehyde because and another molecule which i would like to uh, suggest here to understand this name is ethylene glycol you see this ethylene group here and 2OH so this is very much like that but one hydrogen is removed and there is an aldehyde group so from there the name came glyceraldehyde right okay IUPAC name as you can write 2,3-dihydroxypropanyl that's fine and is there a chiral carbon in this structure is there a chiral carbon in this structure and of course you can see that the second carbon from the top this carbon is chiral so it can exist in two configurations right so there will be two glyceraldehyde molecules let's go stereo now and uh, one of the molecule I will keep the least prior group here this is the chiral carbon here so there is one hydrogen there is a, an OH group there is an aldehyde group and there is CH2 OH group so the least prior one is H so I would like to have H away from the side because uh, then I can write the RS configuration very easily so I will have H here and uh, then these three groups like this or these one two three as you can see this is in anti-clockwise orientation and then I can have uh, this is S glyceraldehyde and then I can have uh, these are the IUPAC this is the IUPAC name you have to mention 2s because the second carbon this is 1 2 3 this is the second carbon here and 1 2 3 these 1 2 3 are priorities not the carbon numbers so at the second carbon you have 2s and 3 dihydroxypropanyl just which which uh, identifies the structure and you can also call it s glyceraldehyde then similarly here we just need to change this uh, orientation and uh, we can get one two three like this in a clockwise manner then this molecule is r clockwise r and uh, this will be called these can be given these names and if you don't understand that these two molecules are different these two molecules are non superimposable you need to watch uh, a video on my channel about chirality in molecules so these are really two different molecules and that's why we need to mention whether the glyceraldehyde is R or S. Okay, so people have been working on these molecules before RS nomenclature was introduced or used and DL prefixes were very common for carbohydrates at that time when Fisher was working on these carbohydrate molecules. So Emily Fisher is a very big name here who won Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in the field of carbohydrates. So instead of wedge dash configuration, Fisher used something which is now called Fisher projections to show uh, these uh, different molecules with same structure. So how Fisher did this, these things? So in a Fisher projection, the four bonds around tetrahedral chiral carbon is viewed in such a way that two bonds are horizontal and coming towards the viewer. Okay, so it's, you will see here. Now let's see what is happening. <clears throat> so this is the chiral carbon and these are these, there are these four bonds here. I need to adjust any two of them such that any two I can pick and I can uh, put them such that they are coming towards us in a horizontal position so h and oh you put them in a horizontal position 
and this carbon at the center and they are coming towards you you can use any other any other groups two groups but you to make this a uh, fissure projection but horizontal will be coming towards you vertical will be going away from you okay and further also uh, for the right selection of groups uh, so in fissure projection we use the main carbon chain in vertical position so c1 we would like to have uh, this c1 which is this is c1 because this is the principal functional group here aldehyde this is c1 this is c2 this is c3 so in the fissure projection also uh, it would be preferred to have the c1 at the top and uh, the other groups in horizontal position coming towards us so let's see what do i mean by that this is s glyceraldehyde as we have seen it before and this s glyceraldehyde wait a minute hey yeah rotate the molecule about coh bond anti clockwise where is the coh bond here right so let's rotate it now we have this carbon one at the top right we can rotate the model along this axis and we can take the CHO here CH2OH will come at this side and H will go at that side now we have the C1 at the top and uh, C2 in the middle and CH2OH almost at the bottom but let's adjust it now adjust in the hugging position so these horizontal positions are coming toward you like they are, the molecule is about to give you a, a hug so that way if you adjust the H and OH right then you can see the CHO comes at the top and CH2OH goes at the bottom. So this part here, this goes at the bottom and you adjust them. You, um, how to make it more clear. So you pick, these are your hands and you pick them up. You, you hold this molecule here and then you bring the, bring them in horizontal position coming towards you. And then you will get this kind of a configuration right so this is a fissure projection for s glyceraldehyde then you can uh, just uh, not use the wedge and dash uh, notations and you can simply write chOH and ch2oh and oh so this is your s glyceraldehyde okay in fissure projection and in in the fissure projection if this oh is a uh, if the OH at the chiral carbon, so now we have only one chiral carbon. In other carbohydrates, we can have more than one chiral carbons. But here, so according to the, uh, we will just concentrate on the last chiral carbon in the chain. So from the top, if you come the bottom most chiral carbon, at the bottom most chiral carbon, if you have OH at the left, then you use an, a prefix L. So this is L glyceraldehyde according to Fisher. And according to modern nomenclature, this is S glyceraldehyde as we know already. And then let's take the another one, the R glyceraldehyde and we try to adjust it in the same way you can proceed and you will reach to something like the OH will now be at the right side and for this you will use a D. So this D glyceraldehyde is R glyceraldehyde. The modern terminology we have R glyceraldehyde but from Fisher times, we use D glyceraldehyde and in modern times also we use D and L a lot because it has a life in it. This is a very much related to Fisher's work. So, and uh, RNS is very much like logical and uh, lifeless kind of a nomenclature system. But anyways, this is D glyceraldehyde and this is L glyceraldehyde. So in case we have more chiral carbons, the D and L prefixes will be told considering the last chiral carbon only okay so we will see it in coming slides let's think about the next aldoses so you have d glyceraldehyde okay and you have l glyceraldehyde in the next aldoses we will have one more carbon so let's uh, for understanding purposes let's insert this carbon here and uh, so this will keep keep the last group this will keep the last oh at the right side so the molecule will still be d and but we will have two different molecules according to whether we keep the oh at this position here or here right so two more molecules both of them are in d configuration and uh, 
what are these so now some common names will be used erythros is being used if uh, uh, you get two groups on the same side and three o's is used when you could uh, get two groups on the opposite side but this is d erythros and this is d three o's right both of them are d still because the last oh this one is at the right side this one is at the right side and from l glyceraldehyde we can get two more molecules right and these two molecules will be like uh, this both of them will be in l configuration because the oh is here and the oh is at the last chiral carbon is at left as at left and uh, this one again is an erythrose no this one is a three o's but this one is l three o's right as you can see these two molecules once again if you can see they are complete mirror images of each other and if this is d3o's and this is l3o's and they are enantiomers and this one so we don't need a fourth uh, third name here we can see that this is 3o's only but in the l form so because all its properties this this molecule and this molecule all the physical properties will be exactly same so we don't need a new name we can use 3o's we use d3o's for that one we can use l3o's for this one and similarly the uh, this these two ones are exactly same except for that they are mirror images of each other so if that one is d erythros this one is l of course and if we have already used the name erythros then we will continue with erythros here so this is l erythros okay so these four molecules, right? D erythros, D three O's, L three O's, and L erythros. In modern stereochemical terminology, you can see these two are enantiomers. D three O's and L three O's are enantiomers, complete mirror images. As you can see, you can take a mirror here and make this molecule here, and this will be the same. And uh, these two also are enantiomers, but uh, these two the erythros the d erythros and l trios they are not complete mirror images so they are diastereomers these two are also diastereomers and uh, these two are also diastereomers <laughs> that is not mentioned here but these two are also diastereomers right they are not complete mirror images of each other so you get two pairs of enantiomers at this level and four pairs of diastereomers okay let's proceed now we have seen uh, two aldotrioses so till now we have seen two aldotrioses with three carbons i mean aldoses with three carbons two and glyceraldehyde d and l and four aldotetroses uh, and we saw in the last uh, slide what next with five carbons out of which three are chiral right we will have how many aldoses so you can understand now you, like you will get uh, from if you proceed family wise you will get from each molecule two more molecules so till now we had four then we can understand that we will have eight aldoses okay so we will need four new common names and dln prefixes to account for all of these eight molecules right so four new common names will be used and d and l prefixes and with six carbons out of which four are chiral we will get double eight into two 16 molecules 16 aldoses and we will need eight new common names and d and l prefixes to deal with their names right so the family of aldoses looks like this it starts from the glyceraldehyde and i have only shown the d aldoses here the l family will have all the mirror images molecule in that in them yeah so this is glyceraldehyde d glyceraldehyde and then you see how it proceeds uh, the OH I, at the last carbon is always here and you inserted a new carbon here and uh, that can be in two configurations different configurations this and this and uh, we know the 2A is erythros and this 2B molecule is uh, 3O's D3O's and then let's uh, think about 3O's from 3O's we can get two more molecules D3O's we can get two more molecules you, inserted a new carbon with two different configurations and then these two are uh, ribose is this one this is very interesting because ribose has all the oh groups took on the same side and this is also found in rna and dna so this will be important for us and arabinose is also interesting 
it's uh, coming from erythrose only and then we have xylose and lysose which are not so important but this is just to show how the family grows and then at last we have two two more molecules from each molecule and one of them here this one is glucose right which is very important for us and it's a close relative mannose and one of them here is galactose so not all of them are important for us but i think glucose mannose and galactose could be important because they uh, form they are used to form uh, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides but we will go into that first understand try to understand how the family is growing and how many molecules are possible at each, each level so let's think the do the d glucose family this family from how do we reach to this family we start from the d glyceraldehyde and then we go to the erythrose so still we have uh, oh at the right and then two oh at the right then when we come to the arabinose then at first we have this oh to the left and then we reach to glucose then we have the fourth oh at the right side only so this family you can um could be very useful sometimes the d glucose family from glyceraldehyde to erythrose to arabinose to glucose okay and in similar way we can have ketoses also and uh, the structure of the simplest polyhydroxy ketone you can make like uh, we discussed with aldoses so you you will have a uh, two oh so the first ketoses in the first ketose which is here there is no chiral carbon so that's interesting no stereo isomers possible and its common name is dihydroxyacetone because you see acetone is like this and uh, you can have two oh here and remove one h ch2 ch2 you get this thing right so this is dehydroxy dihydroxy acetone okay and iupac name you can always write it's very simple to do to get the next member we can add a c here okay so let's proceed uh, we can add carbons here from the first chiral carbon here till now we have no chiral carbons and then we can add so now this carbon gets chiral here this carbon gets chiral and it can exist in two configurations which can be uh, made by exchanging the groups you get you have kept the oh here and then in the next molecule you can take the oh at the other side so you see that carbon is chiral so only one chiral carbon with three three like aldo keto triose with keto triose we have no chiral carbon with keto tetrose tetrose we have the first chiral carbon here and uh, this can exist in two forms because this ca carbon is chiral so these two forms here erythrulose and uh, d erythrulose for this one in which the last uh, um, at the last chiral carbon we have oh at the right so this is d erythrulose and this is l erythrulose not so important uh, to remember the name but and in the same story as uh, it happened with the uh, um, aldoses now ketoses you start with the first one there is no chiral carbon so there is only one molecule and from here we start the d family and uh, so here i don't have to mention d or l no, here d erythrulose and then d ribulose d xylulose and then when we reach to fructose we have its four other members sorbo stagatose whatever but yeah fructose is important so you see this fructose so some important monosaccharides from these two families so the first one is d-glucose this is very important for us to remember actually i would say that in d-glucose you have uh, six carbons so one two three four five six and four of them are chiral and because this is a d-glucose you have oh at the right but at the C3, 1, 2, 3, the OH is at the left. Okay, so this we need to understand at the third carbon. And this is the same case with fructose also. In fructose, you will have, a, because it's not an um, aldose. Wait a minute. 
fructose also at the C3 at the C3 we have uh, OH at the other side so you have CH2OH CO and then down there you have only three chiral carbons in fructose it has six carbons but only three of them are chiral because of the structure and one two three the third carbon you have OH at the left other two at the right so this these two molecules the D-glucose is very important the glucose you see the C3 the OH is at the opposite side okay and glucose is perhaps the most abundant biomolecule because it's present in cellulose starch and sucrose also then the other one I would like you uh, to pay some importance on is D-ribose it has all the OH groups together right so D-ribose on the right hand side all the OH groups and it's a pentose so it has only five carbons pentose right and uh, it will be seen in RNA and DNA and galactose is also important galactose differs with glucose at the C4 so if this is your glucose wait a minute let me clear a little bit if this is the glucose you go to the fourth carbon this fourth carbon here and you invert the configuration here then you get a galactose so galactose uh, we will see what an epimer is in the next video but we can I can introduce it a little bit here it is a C4 epimer so I what I mean by epimer is like at that carbon the configuration is not same so galactose is C4 epimer of glucose right so if you are taking D galactose so you can take D galactose is C4 epimer of D glucose so these three are important here and uh, it will be seen galactose will be seen in lactose a disaccharide okay and in the family of ketoses I think only this one fructose is important it's very much like glucose as you can see from bottom it's all it's like from the bottom one two three four carbons it's it's like glucose and at the top uh, there is a little bit of twist because of uh, um, ketone group being there so this will be seen fructose will be seen in sucrose yes so in the next video we will discuss uh, some very interesting stereochemical prefixes what is epimer what are anomers and things like that but uh, for this lecture until here is good enough aldoses and ketoses right so we discussed the family thank you very much for watching